Oh. On Instagram Live, I'm just going to ask um, Pastor Nath is going to come on now. On Pastor Live, Nathaniel is ask, yes. Thank um, you. All right. So, God bless you all. Um, we're just waiting for Pastor Nath Nathaniel to come on, and we we'll start our inter. Oh no. Yes. Thank you. That it. That's it. All right. Hello, Pastor. Na Hello, Pastor. Na how are you? Nathaniel, how are you? I'm blessed I'm, and highly favored. You? Very well. Sir? Very well. Thank you. I trust you and your lovely family are doing well. In spite of the COVID. Yes, we are. In spite of the COVID 19 <laughs> pandemic and the lockdown uh, in Lagos. Yes, we are fine and um, we are enjoying the compulsory holiday. Um, uh, my wife and children love it. So <laughs> daddy. Uh, full, full time. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how, how are you spending the time? How have you been spending the time? How have you been making well, it? Well, it's... Yes, um, I've been resting a lot, um, fellowshipping with the Lord and having a great time with the family and just, you know, just um reflecting on on the times that we live in yes just deep reflection and getting ready for the new season okay brilliant so well um a lot of people have been looking forward to to this uh time uh, just to uh you know put things in context so uh for us at the liberty church you know every year we have something called the atmosphere of worship and we've done it three i think this will be the fourth time we're going to do it with uh uh, that we went, we, it was planned to do it with uh, Nathan, uh, Pastor Nathaniel. And of course, because of the pandemic, we had to shut down everything. Uh, but uh, we, we are going to continue. We're going to have it live tomorrow. But uh, for logistics sake, uh, Pastor Nat is not able to join us uh, tomorrow. And uh, some people were not too happy about that. So I thought to come to a healthy compromise and at least uh, have have him on with us live today. So we're going to be asking a few questions. Uh, and uh, I, would, I would start light first, okay? Because uh, we, we, will go, we will go into the deeper waters later. So let's start lighter. <laughs> ankle deep. Uh, ankle deep before we now get into the waist deep and the <laughs> waters we, can, we cannot walk in. Uh, so, so we, I, I, I want to talk to the man behind the trumpet. You know, many times when people see men of God, and you know, they see how God does extraordinary things through them, they hardly realize that they are ordinary men like them. So, uh, mm. I want I want us to talk about some very simple things for starters. Okay, a few people sent some questions. You know, so let me start by saying, what is your favorite movie? What's your favorite movie? Um. I used to be a movie person years ago. I mean, that's years ago, but f something happened. That <laughs> part of me just so, died. So, <laughs> in fact, my wife is the movie person. I mean, she's like big time okay. movie person, um, and she's been she from time to time tries to get me to <laughs> do movies. But I mean, I don't know. Somewhere along the line, I just that that oh, part just. Oh. But then, I used to like um, comedy movies and action movies. A lot of um, uh, CIA secret. Oh. Um, I mean, detective kind of movie. But I mean, the, for some time I have not done movies except for maybe a few. Yeah. Um, hit. Movies like um, War Room, okay, um, Christian, Fireproof, and, uh, Christian yeah, movies. Those, okay, I see. Yes, sir. But yes. but it's not like you have anything against movies in general. You just it's Absolutely just is your is your devotion. Okay, that's a personal thing for you. Okay, so what about okay when you used? I know you like football. Yeah, you like. Oh, you, that, I, that, that 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 part cannot die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I think I think you're. Are you a Mercy fan? Is that your? Oh, 
Oh, yeah. oh, give thanks to the Lord for His mercy. And that's forever. Okay. I miss so much mercy for him. Okay, okay. At least, at least that you you have something outside of the Bible that you know. At least you. So, okay. In terms of books, what what what's your favorite book? Oh, yes. Um, Apart from the Bible. I, I, okay, I did a lot of... I won't say I've got favorites per se, but I, I, I did a, a lot of Kenny Hagen books. Okay. Um, A.W. Toza. Um, okay. I'm more of the old school guys. And Derek Prince. Yes. I did Derek Prince. I did um, Benny Hinn books. Okay. Um, and then and one of the new guys whose book I love was um, Jennings. Jensen Franklin, his book on fasting. Fasting, okay, that's a so, good one. Yeah, so I'm more, I'm normally more of the um, older guys. I just tend to connect with them. And it makes sense. I, so, I love Derek Prince I, and I love those folks. What, what about your favorite artists? I mean, I know you might not want to be biased, but let's, let's say the ones that, the, the, the one or two that really get you, every one of us, the same way you have a, a football uh, favorite. Yes. Uh -huh. I'm sure you have somebody you like to listen to, one or two. Yes. Um, um, how do I? Okay, let me take it from even mainstream. You know, I had a very um, strong jazz background. Mm -hmm. I did. Um, um, you know, I I started in like mainstream. I did sessions. Yes. I was a part of um, Steve Roth's jazz orchestra, and I was the oh, band wow. leader. I mean, Steve Roth was like um, a very prominent. A musicologist, yes, you know, in those days in the 70s, um, so was, yeah, yeah. 80s. So I was his band leader when we had this jazz orchestra. So I did a lot of you know repertoires, jazz. So, um, Miles Davis was my hero, um, Arturo Sandoval, trumpet player. Have you heard of Sadao, um, Sadao Watanabe? Yes, yeah, Sadao Watanabe, Grover Washington, um, yeah, Grover Washington, sax player, and then in the Christian Circle, yes. Kirk Willem, yes. and then another trumpeter who played with Kirk Willem, Rick Brown. What about um, Phil Driscoll? Yeah, of course, of course. Mm. Phil Driscoll was a major influence, um, and he still is. Have you ever met him? And then, yes, I've met him. We've, we've played together. He sent me my current trumpet as a gift oh, wow. and said to me, never, and dropped a note, never sell that trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. Uh, okay, that, that. We, we played together at the Park Lane, um, London. Oh, good. Um, a few years ago, and then at the um, in New York, um, at then what's this this hotel where they had them um, coming to America? Um, what is very it, prominent? One. Waldorf Astoria. Waldorf Astoria. Yes. yes, it's been sold to the Chinese now. The Chinese are buying up everything. Yeah, so yeah, it's been sold to them. Okay, yes. brilliant. So, what, what's your? I know you travel a lot. Um, and don't say Lagos because your, your wife lives there. What's your favorite city? <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite city? Ah, um, interestingly, I, 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 I love it in the UK. Okay. You know, yeah, um, the UK has, maybe because I'm conservative, so yes. it's, it's somewhat. So I, I like it when I go through um the villages yes you know and see the greens so i i love the uk generally um, um I, america is like, <laughs> like <laughs> big and but um i have i have, have this connection to the uk to london and Good. Um, outside london Good. and um, and i mean i don't know if, well most people probably know that you were supposed to be in the uk with us is it later this month um, yes, I, I um, mean, in fact, this you have an event, you had an event planned. Yes, okay. yes, um, thy kingdom come. Okay, um, yes, I was to come, come in for um, atmosphere of worship with you, and then, um, and then after that, you have after that, stay back, rehearse, and have um, thy kingdom come with yeah. well, the world. Lon 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 London is still waiting for you, and uh, by the grace of God, we look forward to that. And then, Amen. What, 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 will you, what, is the, what will you say is the funniest thing that you remember that ever happened to you? Okay, uh, um, <laughs> I, I have a lot of those things. I'm sure that 
maybe as we go, yeah, there, there are parts of me that people may not know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm quite hilarious around my friends. Thank you. Um, I, you know, I comedy was one of the. I, I actually used to do stand up comedy. Really? And, um, yeah, Holy Malam. Ah. Those days at um, Jazzville. Yes. Oh, really? Jazzville, I'll go there. <coughs> yeah, I do some stand ups and crack a few. Jokes. Okay. In fact, yeah. So it it um, from time to time people see it in my writings and all of that stuff. I tend to express a lot of satire. Okay. And sarcasm. Wow. That, you know, so. <coughs> That, that, that's yes, well, we, we tend to see more of your serious side. I mean, I see some of your hilarious posts. I actually, I actually look forward to those. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so, so I, was, I was going to tell you one of those those days. Okay. Um, I used to maybe just one of them. I used to pray then with my late pastor, who would I'm sure we'll talk about in the course of the yes. Um, yes. We we. We, we had a, a discipline of just praying in tongues every service before yes. at least one hour just speaking in tongues uh, wherever you are and then we'll go to church and pray in tongues. So um, I would normally just pray in tongues from home, <clears throat> yes. you know, in the car, have music, you know, playing and I'm worshiping and I'm praying in tongues. And, and if you've ever lived in Lagos, you know that you, the street of Lagos is where the fruit of your spirit is <laughs> On the, on the <laughs> so, daily basis. Yeah, well, <coughs> Lagos drivers can <laughs> test how Christian you are. So, you know, and of course the downfalls are the <coughs> the apostles of that. The downfall driver. So I was I was coming out from Ujolegba. There is a place called Ujolegba just before stadium, mm -hmm. before you go to the um island and I send the bridge and from nowhere this this downfall driver who we, I mean, they are normally bus drivers by downfall. I mean, yes. bus drivers just got on the Corvette, climbed, and just, you know, this is, this is a bridge, <coughs> a highway, and just got right in front of me. And I'm praying in tongues, worshiping, and I'm like, Shantala, Baba, 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 and as I moved on, I felt the Holy Spirit said, Prayer warrior, man of God. Your, man of your God. Your spirit and your body were disconnected. That, that, that was when the, the, the tongues just ended there. I just said, I said, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> that, 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 that was good to know that, you know, like, like the rest of, you know, us, that we have those kind of moments. Okay, so... Apart from apart from comedy, can you tell us something most unusual um, unusual thing if, that people don't know about you? Something about you that is unusual that people probably don't know. Mm, I enjoy cooking. Oh really? I like to cook. Oh wow! And I and I love very spicy food. Um, the one we call ayamashi. Oh um, wow! Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's, yes. That's... My wife, I, I my. My wife had to, learn. you know, get on YouTube, learn it, and she's an expert now. And then I've got a pastor friend in the in the YouTube <coughs> that, you know, every time I land, yeah, I I go to visit, <laughs> and they think I really love them. <laughs> just that, so anyway, of course I love them because when I go, I order it ahead. Um, pastor Banjo and Ronke, they just do a good job. So I like I like food. I like good food. I like them. Um, Spicy food. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> okay, we know we, we know that now. So, what will you do differently if you had the opportunity to to do it all over again? And uh, you know, and maybe we can tie this in with what advice would you give to your younger self? You know, say maybe when I mean, if you were twenty years again. Um. To be honest, I would I would probably just seek God more. Okay. Um, uh, yes, I, I I started early, but I, if I had my way, I would I would I would uh, I would seek God more. I would devour the Word of God more. Yeah. So that's probably one of, I mean, about the only thing I do because every other thing would fall in place. Okay. You know? That's that. Every other thing I would I would do would fall in place because He directs our path. That, so that, that's, I I would just seek. That's good to know. More. So would advise young people to spend their, their youth seeking God. 
Okay, so in terms of yeah, yeah, because there's a tendency, <coughs> there's a tendency for, I mean, you hear them say, you know what, um, let me enjoy my life now, and then yeah. when I get old, you know, sound I, good. Whereas, yeah, whereas you know, I've had people, older people say to me, you know, if, if they had their chance, they would, you know, have sought the Lord more. Wow. So. Okay, so yeah. we, we people these days uh, see your progress, yeah, but many people are not aware of your process. You know, there's that saying that says, uh, you know, if you don't know my story, then you can't really fully appreciate the, my glory. You know, um, can you tell us a bit about, you know, before your emergence? At the Liberty Church for us, this is our year of emergence, but we are, you know, fully aware that before God fully allows you to emerge, that, you know, he would have, you would have gone through some things. What, what, just in a few minutes, tell us a bit about your process. You know, some people will look at you, uh, Hallelujah Challenge, Instagram followers, CNN, all those glitter things and glamour. Mm. And, you know, some will want to go and buy Instagram followers to be like Pastor Nathaniel. What, what will you say, <laughs> uh, you know, is the price, you know, in, 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 in summary, if you want to Talk about your process. Mm, well, I would always say, you know, very straightforward that in our kingdom, um, the way to live is to die. Mm -hmm. Death is the price for life. Except a corn of wheat falls down and dies, it abides alone. So, and the the more areas of your life that you die to, the more you bear fruit and leave. Um, I began, I was born into a very modest family, Christian family, um, the apostolic church. My parents were already workers and elders in church. Um, so from birth, uh, we were used to people coming to the house to pray. And if you, if you know a little bit about the apostolic, you know they've got a very strong prayer yes. base. Um, so, you know, we, we, I, I grew up seeing people fast in our house, praying in our house, and all of But, you know, but as I grew, you know, I, I, I wasn't really born again. I had no encounter with the Lord. And then um, I encountered music, or music encountered me, whichever way. And I began to blow the trumpet in, um, in, in church as a little boy. But, you know, it was all talent. I, I never really had an encounter with God. Then I moved over to the Redeemed Evangelical Mission Trem, where, I mean, where Bishop Mike presides, and I began, to, I got born again. I got, I got born again in, um, in, um, in Trem, then um, stayed there f a few years, then I moved over to, to the city of David, and it was, in the city of David, that my my life would change drastically. Um, I came in contact with a man who who I, I believe was my man of God, sent from God, and that was where my character was shaped. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, Pastor Esco was a man who, yeah, he was impressed with your gifting and your skill, but if he wasn't anchored on godly character, then he would throw you out. So, um, and then I learned spiritual discipline from him, okay? We would have something called Lazarus Comfort, and um, we would um, fast for 21 days without food, like dry. Wow. And my sisters that, would... That was my straight. Sisters, no. Straight, you wow, know? Wow, okay. Straight, and then we'll have vigils every night, say for a week, Praying in tongues four or five hours nonstop. Wow! Every week before the program, and as, at some point, my family thought I was pushing it too far. I was I was being brainwashed and all of that stuff. And um, I, I I began to have my personal encounter with God, and one of them I'll share. Just one oh. of them. Um, number twelve, Ubiumi Street. I was worshiping, just playing the piano, and I mean, I, preceding that, I was having all of these encounters. I would wake up and cry. I wouldn't know why I'm crying. 
uh, I had a car then, a, a Kia car, Kia, you know, car, and I would put on Terry McCalmon because he's, he's like my worship leader, you know, my personal worship leader. I mean, I have loads of his album, and I'll put it on and I'll just drive away crying and crying. You know, I was looking weird. People thought I was lo losing my mind. Now I understand what that was. It was the wooing of God's presence. It was the wooing. So one of those days I, I got into the room to play my piano and just minister to God. And prior to that, Pastor Esco had said to me, Nathaniel, just find out what the trump of God means, the trumpet of God. You know, there is a place I want you to play the trumpet from. So I began to play the piano in the room and all of a sudden something I can only describe as a holy awe came on me. Uh, I knew it wasn't evil, I knew it was pure, I knew it was holy, but fear just gripped me. I took my hands off the piano, went outside, stayed for a while. I was wondering what it was, and then I was afraid to get into the room, got in again, played, and it looked like that same blanket came on me. Wow. You know, later that evening I was driving to serve in church, and then I got a phone call from a relative who had never called me before. I don't know how he got my number. He must have gotten my number from someone. And then as I picked up the call, he didn't even say, how are you? How are you doing? He just said, Nathaniel, thus said the Lord, my hand is upon you wow. from today. Wow. Conduct yourself accordingly. Wow. So this is someone who knew nothing about my private, you know, encounter and just calls. Gave you a prophecy. So since then, yeah. yeah. So since then I knew that... Um, he said, my hand is upon you from today. Conduct yourself accordingly. So I knew um, that from that point, I had to make some hard decisions and made a lot of decisions that have wow. culminated to who I am today. Wow. So that's just... How many night vigils do you say? You, was it night, every night for, to, towards the yes, program? We would, yes, we would. There was this um, program... We, yeah, I remember Lazarus had, Comfort. We called them... Um, yeah. Last yes. So we would we would prepare for about a month to the program. Yes. And we would we would fast almost the whole month. Yes. Okay. And then the week of the program we would have vigils um, from Monday to Sunday because the program was on a Sunday um, in the morning. So we we'll have vigils for for six nights right into the program. So wow. Monday vigil. <laughs> Monday vigil, we are praying in tongues from 12 till about 4, 5, yes. non-stop. Tuesday, the same. Um, praying in tongues and worshipping. Praying in tongues yeah, and worshipping. Saturday night. Um, Wednesday, Thursday. Saturday night into, into Sunday, we we'll sleep in church. So, we're not going home. Wow. You know, um, most people will just stay around. You know, we who serve in the choir would, would stay around church or in church. And then Saturday into um, Sunday... We will just go straight wow. to the you, you see, these are these are the things that people don't see or know. And you know, and the reason why I wanted to underscore that <laughs> because I came from the same church. You know, then I mean, yes, it sir. was a papa uh, parish, and then before we moved Family. to City, yes, and we used to do that with Pastor Tony and Pastor Esco. You know, there were a group of us yes. who used to have vigils like that, and we were not allowed to talk. And in fact, when the praise, when the praise and worship is going on, you are not allowed to just be, uh, you know, enjoying it. You are supposed to be clapping your Absolutely. clapping your hands and using your shakere. You know, I, 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 that, that moves me on to the pastor. I mean, the um, uh, pastor Esco question, and, and I wanted to put a, a bit of context for those who, who don't know. So, myself and uh, Pastor Nathaniel come from the same family, literally the same church, Absolutely. and I, I was sent out as a missionary in um, 1995-6, uh, just before City of David started, and I would come back, oh, and that was my home church. Pastor Esker mm. was Pastor Esker was my pastor, and I just wanted to, you know, say something important. I remember, I wasn't married at the time, but he, he was like a CIA agent with me. Anytime he saw me, saw me with a, 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 a girl around me, just talking, or he would call me and say, "Come, come, 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 come here." 
Is that who is that? Girl. Who is that girl? Typical <laughs> Francesco. Is it typical, what? Typical you, uh, without beating around the what are you doing with her? <laughs> is it, do you want to marry her? I said, uh, no, no, like, leave her alone. Leave her alone. Shall I leave her alone? <laughs> you know, I'm like Typ- typical Francesco. I, I used to why is this man so wicked like this now? I mean, <laughs> how, will, how will I find a wife if I don't talk to him? <laughs> oh, you said that too. Yes. Oh, you said that too. Yes. There was a day. <laughs> There was a I gathered with my friends in the music room. I'm like, I'm like, what kind of man is just I mean in fact I actually said a day, I said, I said your I said your 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 children are abroad and you want me to stay here and do ah, what kind of wickedness is this? Hey man, I, I used to run away from him <laughs> because he always, every time he saw me, he was a reprimand. I'm like, did God send this man to me? But you know, you know, oh, we, yes. we tend not he, to appreciate God people. God send him to us. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Until God sent him to us. It, it was a real blessing. And so how, how did he impact your life? I mean, in what tangible w- w- ways? He, he impacted me through mentoring. Okay. I mean, from time to time, Pastor Oscar would call me, sit me down in his office and just speak to me. He would tell me that this is what I'm seeing. In fact, there was a particular day he said to me, he called me. Um, we were not that close then, okay. you know, because then I still had, um, you know, there's a mentality that musicians have. You know, there's a mindset, you know, band boy mentality. <laughs> you know, you know, so I still had all that, you know, swag. juvenile thing going <laughs> on. So I hanging out with the guys. We're just here to play. And then he'll call me from time to time. He said, Nathaniel, come, let me see you. I don't know what it is about you. <coughs> I'll listen to the recordings of your trumpet and I'm crying. Wow. Pay attention to it. Pay attention to it. Stop going up and down. Stop this playing here, jumping here. Wow. And then I'll go back with the guys. I'm like... I beg this man, you know, only, you know, your children, they are abroad, you want me to be still. <laughs> and then he, you know, he kept saying that. And then, um, fast forward, then I began to have those encounters, like, you know, I told you about. I began to know God for myself. I would, I would, I would just weep, I would have sessions. And then I began to take some tough decisions, walked away from opportunities. Um, I had an opportunity to go to Berkeley. I won a scholarship. There's a wow. A, Berkeley was music school. Berkeley was my yeah, like like the it's like the Harvard for musicians wow. for contemporary music. It's the Harvard of contemporary <coughs> music. So I, we <coughs> sent in our entries. We had a a, a group called Spectrum Four. Myself, Wally Oni, who's like a producer. Uh, Ayo Sholanke in South Africa now. Um, Tosi and Joshua Patani. And we entered in for a scholarship called Berkeley Best. And most of us won. And our manager was working out the modalities to go to the embassy because she was black American. So it was going to be easy to get the visas. We used to do gigs for the American embassy. So it was pretty straightforward for us. It was just then I began to hear from God to say, leave that, leave that. Um, I had this uh, opportunity to travel to France with... Um, Asha, I don't know if you yes, know. Yes, Asha, Asha, yeah. Asha, yeah. Asha, you know, we had this group come from France, a trio, and they got me, the French Cultural Center director got me to play with the group, got Asha to sing, and they liked me so much. And just as they were preparing to get the tour going, God said, Leave that. Wow. I mean, the French Cultural Center director was so, li- was so livid, he was so upset and angry that he declared me a personal non oh, never to walk into <laughs> to the French cultural wow. center. Wow. You know, so, yeah, so I began to walk away from stuff like that and Pastor Scott started seeing that and he would, um, he would, I mean, he, he started seeing that there was something, you know, different about me, changing about me. In fact, there was a time, you know, much later when we began, began to work so closely, um, they wanted the church wanted me to go for the American convention, so they tried to get visas to get visas for me. I was refused a couple of times, and then remember I was in a group with um, um, 
my my the, the team that had just won the scholarship and the black american yes. and they still wanted me so there was the opportunity of um if you if you still play with us we would um, we could get the visa and then i'd mentioned um they called me one of those days you know after i left to say okay um the president then president of Basenjo wants to play golf with some you know some business partners at Ota, and um, someone recommended Spectrum for the jazz group to play. So they said, um, yes, uh, we know you've left the group, but we still want you to come. Wow. And, then, um, and then they said, okay, after that, we're going to play at the American Embassy. And so I told my pastor about it because um, I had I'd made up my mind. Um, something, God, which is why I talked about dying. Yes. You know, there's, there's an encounter one has. <laughs> God literally kills stuff. Yes. You know, you talked about movies. I was a movies person, but I don't know when he died. Yeah. He just <laughs> died. So mm -hmm. um, they called my pastor to try and, you know, to see if he would release me to come to, I mean, go for the gig. And then my pastor then, Pastor Eko said, okay, Nat, um, let's resume this thing so that we are a bit smart. I said, oh. um, these guys want you to come and we also want you to go for the American convention. Um, can we, should we go, should you go with them and then get the visa so we come? And, I, and then I said to Pastor, Pastor, I'm not sure that is God. Wow. I'm not sure that's God. All of a sudden, he knew that something had happened wow. to this boy. Because there was, there was no way wow. the Nathaniel of the past would see an opportunity to go to the U.S. Like and say, I'm not sure wow. this is God. So, you know, he impacted me through mentoring we would right. he would he would call me and say hey look at this man of god he said to me you know um pastor deboe is one man i follow follow him and you know he would he would he would he would um, get me music books he would, i mean when he saw i'd given up everything he said okay what would you need to make you become a top class um, gospel trumpet yeah. player and yes he he would go on his own research about trumpet players and say to me, okay, I found Winton Masalis. Um, they say he's the best right now. And he would go as far as saying, we want to invite him to do classical wow. music so, so, he, can, so he can inspire me. Wow. So he, would, he, would, he was such a man. And then I remember during the Lazarus Comfort Service, we wanted to have a replica of the seven trumpets in Revelations. Mm -hmm. Pastor Esco actually all that seven expensive trumpets wow. just for me in church. Wow. That is... So not only did he um, <coughs> pour in spiritually, yes. he poured in, financially. you know, um, financially, resources. Um, he, would, he, would, he would hammer on character. He would teach us on, you know, I mean, things like it's not everywhere you go, they give you food you eat. You put yeah. your knife to your teeth. <laughs> and till today, that still works, you know. Um, I still travel around the world and I'm in a hotel for ministry and the host says, oh man of God, eat everything. And I tell my team, that's not, that's, that's not when to eat everything. Yes. So he, he, he taught us this discretion, the ability to delay gratification. You know, it's not every morning you collect. Yes. Uh, purity. Yes. You know, spiritual discipline. So, and then from afar, I saw him live the life. He was, uh -huh. you know, he would... He will tell you service is 6.30. He's there 6.15 praying in tongues. Yes. So he, he modeled uh, what, what he What he taught. He even even, preached, even yeah. till he's dead, because I saw him a few days before he passed. He was here in England and, I went, and he was lying down. And, you know, I'm, I don't remember what it was I said. And his response was scripture. He just, he says, he that was, <laughs> you know, something like, oh, uh, 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 Pastor, I hear that your temperature, from a doctor's viewpoint, and he just quoted scripture. That was what he quoted, you know, till the that end. That was my pastor. Yeah, I mean, we thank God for his life. In, in lieu of time, it, it, maybe we should just quickly go into, you know, worship and ministry very quickly. You know, yes, um, in the light of, you know, what you just spoke about, we, what, what would you say is the line between you know, true worship and performance as a, as a, a minister. I mean, because what you do is very integral. You know, you, uh, you lead people into God's presence. 
Um, and people, you know, have come to appreciate that there's a un uniqueness about your ministry. I'm sure there are a lot of young, uh, upcoming music ministers uh, that would like to hear this because we have worship leaders, you know, who want to make it. But what will you say is the differentiation between getting people into true worship uh, so that they can contact God, touch God, uh, and performance? You know, some of us, this is one of the reasons why, you know, there are few people, there are not too many because of what it is that I do that when I'm ministering, I, I, it doesn't matter what it takes. I will want them there. How can we raise more people like that? And what is that differentiating factor? Well, um, when asked this question, I, 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 I like to explain it in, in a broader context. Okay. Because it's easy. People want you to tell us, okay, tell me what to do to minister, to have the presence, the anointing, and all of that stuff. I, I always begin by explaining from the broader context of worship. Yes. That worship, of course, uh, most average believers will know that it's beyond singing a song. You know, that you cannot separate your, you cannot separate your life from your song. Yes. Okay. So it, it's first your life. Okay. Your, 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 your first the offering, your life. Yes. Um, Romans 12, I beseech thee therefore, brethren, you know, by the message of God, that you present your body. So you, you, we begin first from, from our lives, okay? I always say to people, God is more interested in where the song is coming from mm. than the song itself. That's a good one. You know, it's, it's, it's more interested in where the song is coming from, the song itself. But because of time, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll leave that there. Talking about the expression of worship as a psalmist, as a musician, you know, um, the Bible says those to worship was worship in spirit and in truth. For me, first and foremost, the spirit means, you know, the Bible says we are the circumcision who worship in spirit and in truth. So, um, there is no true worship without being born again. Yes. So um, that person who stands to lead, you know, people into God's presence must first be born again, must be born of the Spirit, washed <coughs> in the blood. Okay. And then the truth part is, is what people normally miss it. Um, what divides mere singing from worship is, you know, and... Anyone can sing. You can sing to feel good. You know, people sing every time. Um, you go on the on the on the underground or in the bus. People are singing. You know, but may not necessarily be worshiping. What brings worship is the intentionality of it. Is the motive. So Jesus says in um, Matthew 15 verse 8, these people draw near to me yeah, and they honor me with their mouth, mouth but their mouth. hearts <coughs> are far from me. Mm -hmm. Then he goes to say something so powerful. In vain do they worship me. In other words, this worship is vain. It's not true. It's, mm. it's false. So, yeah. So, like it that. begins from being intentional about the worship. Of course, from your life, yes. having, you know, then our worship is really revelation driven. Yes. So Jesus says to the woman at the well, you worship who you know not. Mm. Who you know not. We know who we worship. I love this. Really? So a, 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 a psalmist who has no knowledge of God <coughs> is really active. Mm. Because revelation, revelation is, the, is, this, is this fuel of worship yes. uh, on on the back of that let me ask a very pertinent question so we have our atmosphere of worship um, um, and wonders program tomorrow and one of the things that is so integral for me is to highlight the fact that it is not a concert so we are bringing by the grace of god you know uh, great ministers yeah but let's don't let's not just come and enjoy their music set you know so you know how what worship for us for me, is a key to entering into something. How how will you, we the supposed congregants, how can you um, um, 
advise us? How you know will you guide us into getting into His presence? Let me read a, a scripture to you, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Revelations four one two. After these things, I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven, which means heaven has a door. And the first voice yeah. which I heard wow. was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, "Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this." Okay, and then it says, "Immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne." So, uh, I mean, uh, this is a man standing in a place, and then a door is open to him that the people around him are not aware of, and he enters into a place, hears a voice, has an encounter, sees the future. How can one, I mean, the reason why I'm saying this is, you know, I cherish those experiences. That's what I live for. How, you know, mm. and for me, that's the most important thing. You know, as a worship leader and a worshiper yourself, I know you understand this. What, what is it that, you know, you can give as an advice to people who want to have this kind of encounters? You know, and you can have it in their room, online, anywhere. What, what what are your thoughts on this? Yes, I I I I I, I pray. I'm, I hope to bring these thoughts together. Um, I began to do a study on songs of deliverance, and I'm hoping to, you know, praying for grace to put that into a book. And one of the things I said um, while teaching that in Orlando for William McDowell, <laughs> I mean at the conference was that, you know, music. When I began to research the 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 roles of music in scripture. Yes. Number one was music was was a protocol in in God's presence. Yes. Was part of the divine protocol in God's presence. So he says to you in Psalm one hundred, enter his gates with thanksgiving. He says, come before him with singing. Yes. With singing. Yes. yes. That's a powerful one. So come. So which was why that door opened because there was music. Mm. So. I mean, that's why he, so to think about it, why did he create Lucifer with pipes in his body such <coughs> that every time he moved, there was a sound of music? That's because God, it's the protocol of his presence to have songs and singing. So you read Revelations 4, Revelations 5, 15, and all of those, and you're hearing the voice of much people singing, saying, you know. So music, it's, I, I tell churches, when we, Remember that revelation, I, I, I started by saying that it's your intentionality that, that brings that power. So when you cease to look at worship as something we do for the, for the late commas to come, <laughs> for the, you know, then, so it's an integral part of the, the, the protocol of his presence. Psalm 68 verse 24 to 26, he says, we have seen thy procession, O Lord. The singers go first, the musicians behind. Yes. So music, he says, thou art holy, thou who inhabits the praises of his people. So the congregation need to understand that this time of um, worship is not the time to sing your favorite song. Oh. That we are together as a big choir trying to minister to him because that's the, um, I, I say sometimes that in the way that we have oxygen in the atmosphere, the atmosphere of heaven is worship. worship. <coughs> yes. It's the Holy Ghost. It's, it's worship. So when we create that atmosphere, he comes. That's number one to God. Number two, because I know a bit how um, your giftings work, and I, I tend to work around with a lot of prophetic people and operate as a minstrel, I know that I, by operating as a minstrel, I don't just minister to the Lord. Mm -hmm. One of my assignments in events like that is to help stir up the giftings of the man of God. So Second Kings, the Bible says, um, the prophet said, bring me a minstrel. minstrel. He didn't say bring God a mm -hmm. minstrel. So bring me. That's because if you read um, Psalm 49 verse 4, it talks about, uh, my dark saying being unveiled by the sound of an about a half. Wow. Psalm 64. Psalm 64 says, There is none that stirred up his, 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 his himself to lay hold on God. Wow. So there are certain sounds. Yeah. Psalm 60, Psalm 64. If you've got the Bible, you can go there. Yeah. Say, there is none that stirred up 
his, himself to lay hold on wow. God. So there's something about anointed worship. There's hardly a prophet I have found whose gifting is not triggered and activated by anointed music. I remember I was um, somewhere in Ghana with a, a man of God, just Christmas service, you know, we were going to do a teaching and I was invited to just lead worship. Nothing serious, he wasn't going to prophesy or whatever. And then I began to minister and then he just jumped up the stage and said, oh, man of God, please, not tonight, <laughs> don't do that to me, don't do that to me. The Lord said, there's somebody here. That's because there's a frequency of the prophetic. Okay, sad. there's, you know, there's a... Um, um, my, my wife and I were listening to some experiment. I don't know if you heard it, something called, um, they were trying to, they had two words. Um, what was the first one? Yanni and Laurel. So they said, which one can you hear first? So it was something about sound frequency. There is such a thing as a prophetic, you know, because frequency that, is... that when <clears throat> the music is right, the giftings of the man oh, from nowhere, <laughs> The, the portals are open and the you know oh. and he's he's spot oh. on oh. you know so and that and it's not it's not it's not about it's not entertainment no. music then no. it's spiritual music so at that point you are like a warrior yes. you are like so those days in the city of david um i would have the responsibility on myself to say you know what if the man of god is not spot on today then it's my fault wow wow uh, so, uh, so I have a couple the, of people like the, that. So that drives me into, into praying prayer. in the spirit. I'm saying, Lord, um, what's the sound to unlock that today? So <clears> normally, <throat> if I don't have a rhema sound, yes. this is an advice to, to worship, worship leaders who act as ministerial. If you don't have a rhema uh -huh. sound, I always tell people, go into a service with, with where you are in the spirit with God. Mm. So in other words, What's God ministering to me in that season? Yes. What's the life? What's the rhema? So I go there. Or two, find out from the man of God, is there any song that you like? Because it's the, the second role is to is to stir up his gifting. Yes. So you you are not going there singing the songs that you like. Yes. Yes. So many times that's the mistake we make. Yes. You want to sing your favorite songs. Yes acting as a mystery, unknown to you that you are supposed to stir yeah. up the gifting of that yeah. man. So <clears throat> normally, um, if, if I don't get a rhema word as to Lord, and this is a rhema yeah. for this service, I begin with the, the, with the sounds that will normally stir yeah. up. So uh, well, when I'm done with ministering unto the Lord and it's time to walk with the minister. prophetic man or the man of God to minister, you there are sounds. So, for instance, if I was ministering with um, that the Adeboe, for instance, let's say for instance, that means we that the Adeboe, and he says, okay, I'm, I've had the privilege of doing that a few times when Pastor Kunle wasn't there, and he said, Nathaniel, please come stand in. So I won't go there singing a song like "You Are Not a God." <laughs> it's a good song. It would stir holy, 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 a, holy, a younger holy. person yeah. up. But I'll probably go there. And be, I, if I don't have a rhyme, I'll begin with who there is no. no, no. Then, as I'm singing that, as we stay there, because it, the way it works in the spirit, Paul says we begin in the the, the natural realm. As you press in, mm -hmm. as you press in, as the portals open mm -hmm. up, then God begins to give you specifics. I okay, so I love this. yeah, I love so that you, so you, you, I'll begin with the sounds that you know. Stir up yeah. the giftings of that man. I, I don't know if I've ever mentioned to you that. I mean, generally speaking, I I don't I don't like to minister in the supernatural on a Sunday, you know, uh, prophetic it's time constraints and all of that. But every time you've come on a Sunday, when you lead <laughs> worship, ask my people. They, they, you know, I break those laws because. I, I start seeing things. I start getting prophecies. <laughs> and some of them are so big. Some very accurate and pertinent ones. I, you know, I've been there. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. It's just, just word for word. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we, we, we need you to multiply yourself by the grace of God. Uh, 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 oh, God is raising people. On, 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 the, on the back of that, how, would you, how do you get, you know, your songs are, incre I mean, they're clearly you know, work songs given from heaven, you know, um, how do you get inspiration for those songs? So, you know, you know, there are some songs that 
never wear out. Some, you know, there are some other songs that are seasonal, but there are some songs that, you know, it's almost like as though, okay, you want to, you want to tap into something, you pick this one, Casting Crowns, you want to, that kind of, well, how do you get the inspiration from, this is for upcoming ministers, this is from people who, you know, or even writers, how do you get your inspiration for these songs? Okay, um, there is no hard and fast rule, but um, maybe if there's any rule of thumb for gospel music, I would say, let the songs be an overflow of a love work. In other words, let it be the product of your relationship with God. So, personally, I don't have retreats for songwriting. Okay. Oh, I don't have songwriting time. Okay. But I would have retreats to fellowship with, with God. God. Uh. You know, my time with God. So, so what he says to me, the, the perspective I have of him now becomes the song. Yes. So, so sometimes, and at other times, I'm praying in the spirit. I, I've, I've, I've had a, a, a discipline and a history of praying a lot extensively in tongues. Okay. Um, I always say that praying in tongues, amongst other things, is a, a powerful spiritual downloading software. Yes. So, be, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto man, for no man understandeth him, how be it in the spirit, he speaks mysteries, mysteries which is divine secret. So, um, I'm in a service, for instance, I was in um, New Wine and I'm in a service, the pastor is praying in tongues, late pastor, um, um, Michael, bless his soul, and I'm praying there, and I'm praying in tongues, and normally it's like a supernatural moment, and of course I attribute it to the grace of God. It's almost as if maybe two or three seconds before that time comes, it's like um, all I can say is, it's like when somebody says to you, so how do you um, know that God is saying this? How, do you hear it? I always mm -hmm. compare it as lightning and thunder. It's like, prrr, it just happens yes. and it's a supernatural yes. moment. Maybe a split second, I know that there's something coming and it drops like a rain. Yes. And I'm praying in tongues, and then I hear you are God from beginning to the end. Yes. Sometimes uh, it's the name of God that drops. So I'm in a service uh, worshiping and I feel, you know, this staring in my spirit. And then I begin to pray in tongues and then I hear, Unisha Yan. Wow. Then I'm not a Yoruba person. It, it, it rings so loud in my spirit and then I had to I have to stop you know and usher there to say um, to you see what what so you share yeah no I just heard it right now and then it says God of awesome wonders and then I, the more I keep praying in tongues the more the it's like I'm squeezing the juice wow. the words begin to wow. fall in place and then sometimes I go into the scripture and then do a, a, a search on it um, um, so I tell um, sometimes the mistake a lot of songwriters do is you get that seed, sometimes you rush into the studio with mm. it. Meanwhile, there's more in it. So normally what I'll do is I'll stay days and just soak on that and then to extract everything, you know, in that. And of course, there's the place where there's the art of it. First is the heart of it where supernaturally you get the, the name of God. Uh, for instance, there was a day I was, you know, meditating and I'm just meditating on God and then I hear Awa Maridi. Mm. And then I do a search and it's it's um, Romans 11, yeah, 33. His, 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 his knowledge is past finding. And then I'm gazing at a God and I'm asking him all these questions. So you have no root, you have no beginning. Wow. So where did you come from? So where are you going to? And then because as you think, um, thinking is a doorway to the supernatural. Mm. The Bible says about Peter, as he thought on the vision, then the yes. Holy Ghost said, so, so as, as I think about, you know, meditate on a seed he's put in my heart, whether in my time of worship, in time of the word, or sometimes I'm having my bath singing, like I know when I was singing, I just heard the son of God is listening. Then I'm, it's almost as if somebody sang it to wow. me from me. And I'm like, oh, wow, wow. Where is that? And then, you know, so wow. there's really no hard and fast rule. If there's any rule, I would say, let it be an outflow of your relationship with God. So let your songs be be like, oh, this is the new perspective I have of God. Wow. And somebody says, come on, you know, so this is a, a side of God I have found. Wow. This is, the, you know, the, a perspective of God I've found. The, the, this is so... So it must be a relationship yeah. and relation. I mean, so it's, it begins 
um, with um, relationship, um, with relationship, mm -hmm. then revelation. revelation, then reverence. Yes, and you repeat the whole wow. process. I, so, I, 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 I love that. You know, I'm going further from what you just spoke about. You talked about speaking in tongues and all of that. What is your daily routine? You know, they, they, you know, they, they say that the secret of men, you know, is in their is in their stories. What you know, so when you wake up in the morning, what are the things that you do first? You know, you know, you know what makes his man by his priorities. What are the first you get out of bed? What you know, what do you do, and you know, what do you do within the first hours? What are the things that are habits? You don't you don't break them. You don't mess around with them. For you, from when you wake up. For years. Like I said, I've had a, a, a history of praying in tongues. In fact, I prayed in tongues so much. Um, I went for honeymoon <laughs> with my wife and I forgot I was in the honeymoon. <laughs> so um, late at night, I woke up, took my, my computer, put my headphone, praying in tongues. And my wife wakes up. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> so, yeah, so I've had a history of just praying in an unknown language and fellowshipping with the Lord. I, um, so you find me, I go everywhere with my headphone because I connect with, with music and worship. So um, I enter into worship and then I read chapters of the Bible wow. every day. I make sure no day goes without reading the word. I mean, the word is... God himself. So when you have the word, um, Paul says, let the word of God dwell oh, in you richly. Then he says singing. Wow. So dwelling, singing. So, you know, and, and of course, um, your music, um, having an encounter, working on your music, practicing and, you know, honing your skills. So I've done those things over Hello. the years and Every other time I'm, I'm engaging music, if, if, if I'm not, if I'm idle, yes. if you come into the room, my wife, she, she'll tell you I'm praying in tongues. So she'll wake up. Sometimes she's woken up before and says to me, don't you sleep? So, I mean, uh, I've just had this consistent habit of praying in an unknown tongue, fellowshipping with the Lord and, you know, reading the word. Uh, you know, so I mean, uh, oh wow, it's not that this, this is so inspiring. I mean, we have just a few minutes left, and I, I, I want us to try and maximize it by so. Um, tomorrow we have our atmosphere of worship and wonders, um, uh, service. On um, uh, well, unfortunately for now, Pastor Nat is not able to make that service, but we have um, Sinach tomorrow, uh, by the grace of God, and uh, and on us, Ari, for those of you who are. Who are visiting you i mean beautiful yeah yeah you're on here um please make sure you're, you 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 do come back um you just find us on youtube just go to my my youtube i'm sorry my instagram profile and there's a link there um and then you know we can take it from there let's get into god's presence um pastor nathaniel do you have two things i would like for you to do before you leave if you can if you have your trumpet there or you know uh to blow a prophetic sound for us and then at the end to say a prayer for all our listeners because this has been a very enriching time please just if you can you know blow and just lead us into worship for a few minutes if that's possible amen what a privilege to to do this and just just wherever you are just can i have the keyboards just come up a bit just lift your hands and celebrate the the passover lamb what a season we're in. I don't think that, you know, all of this um, pandemic is, is by accident, coinciding with Easter. So let's just worship the, the Lamb of God. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha. You are Alpha. Jesus and Omega. Oh, we worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. 
be praised. We give you all. We give you all. Captain of my destiny and captain of my destiny in you alone, in you alone, I make my boast. You reign alone, you reign alone as Lord of the champion of the champion of. The whole and, and captain of my destiny. destiny in you alone I make my boast you reign alone mm. just go to yeah. be far as I close Ima, Emmanuel, 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 Emmanuel. Your name be praised. Father, your name is Emmanuel. You are the God who is with us. You are the God who is in us. What a privilege to be called by your name. Thank you for this day and hour. Thank you for what's going on in the world. Your word says in all things to give thanks. Father, we thank you because in spite of all of this, you are working out your purposes and plans. Lord, I thank you for your people at the Liberty Church. Thank you for your people, oh God. Thank you for tomorrow's service. Father, we ask for a spirit of worship. Thank you for the spirit of prophecy. Thank you for an open heaven. Father, as we have released this trumpet, let it reverberate in the spirit. We declare that the portals of heaven are open. The prophetic portals are open in the name of Jesus. That there is a river that will flow unhindered in the name of Jesus. Thank you because there are miracles, signs and wonders. Thank you because a sound will be released that will pierce the darkness, yes, that will pierce the virus, that will pierce the pandemic yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you for salvation of souls. Yes, Thank you yes, for Lord. joy unspeakable yes. and full of glory. Yes. Ima, Emmanuel. 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 Your name is 
lives and the battles. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Is, let, let me indulge me, please. Let me ask one request. There's one song, if you can sing for me. You sing it with uh, Bemigo. I mean, Pastor Bemigo, who we used to, all used to pray together in those days. Holy Pastor Spirit, God. carry me. Holy Spirit, me, carry me. Oh, if you can sing it as we close up. Holy Spirit, carry, carry me, me, oh, Holy Spirit, carry me, to the place of power, carry, carry me. me, oh, hey, Holy Spirit, carry, carry me. me, oh, to realms of glory, carry me, oh, to deep, carry deep waters, me, carry me, Open the eyes of my understanding. Open my eyes to see Jesus. Oh, Holy Spirit, carry me. Oh, carry me. Oh. Thank you so, so, so much. Oh. Pastor Nat, you are an incredible blessing and you, you continue to be and I pray that God will continue to make you a city set on a hill that can never be hidden. Amen. That you will continue to be a vessel Amen. of honor in his hands. That as you Amen. blow the trumpet, God will, ne will never stop blowing through you. That you, Amen. That, that you will be a, an eternal excellence, a joy to many generations. Amen. That even after, our, even after our generation, generations will come Amen. and hear about Amen. your ministry. The same way they speak Amen. concerning uh, Tory Smith Wigglesworth, A. W. Toza, Amen. and the likes. By the grace of God, your name will not just be a reference point on earth, but also in heaven. We, 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 Amen. Lord, we just, we just thank you for your hand upon your servant's life. We thank you for where you brought him from, from humble beginnings, Amen. and where you are taking him to, because you are not finished with him yet. Yes, Lord. Lord, we're praying yes, by Lord. your spirit that you will continue to be his source, continually be his source, that he will never, never be disconnected from you uh, because that is where his strength lies. Lord, we pray that you will surround um, him, his wife, his children. You will be their protection. You will be the ever-present help in their time of need. Lord, we pray Amen. against any form of ill health, any form of tragedy, Amen. any form of disaster. Amen. Lord, we will never Amen. hear about bad news concerning Amen. them, concerning any Amen. member of their family. No scandals, no, no tarnishing of his Amen. image. All will be well concerning Amen. him. His light will shine brighter and brighter. Uh, we thank you, Father Amen. Lord, because we know that the best has not even come yet. It is yet to come. Amen. His best days Amen. are yet ahead of him. Bring him into another season Amen. of glorious emergence. Let, let him Amen. be Father Lord. Hallelujah. Let him be Father Lord. Uh, 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 someone that not just earth reckons with, but heaven reckons with all the days of Amen. his life. In Jesus' Amen. mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Nat. For those of you who I know my pleasure. Sir. I know you guys didn't want us to stop, especially the worship part. It's it's you can catch it on Instagram live. You know, it's going to be on for 24 hours. But it, this is also on our YouTube channel. I mean, I don't know about you, but 
I am going to go back and listen to it because it is was is really life changing. By the grace of God, I mean uh, I'm a minister, but I need to listen to it. There are some key points that I mentioned, even some scriptures. I admonish you share the link with your friends, you know, and and make sure because what we are looking for a generation of what true worshippers that will really connect with God. We love you all. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. I believe it's same here. Uh, thanks, and my regards to you know. Uh, I call her Saranata. She's my favorite person in your house. I, I love you, Pastor Nat. But I, I really like your wife. Yeah. We love yeah. you too. We, we can't wait to be with you. Yeah. And you know, anyway, and let me tell them, every time we come to Liberty, they spoil us with a lot of food. We, 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 I, now that we know you like, so we can't wait now that we know you like Ayamashi, we will make it extra hot. Yeah. We will make it extra hot if, when you come. If, if you if you want if you want a double anointing, if you invite me, better add Ayamashi. I will, we will make sure we do. The anointing will be hot. <laughs> Thank you so much, and we're looking forward to your pleasure, worship sir. time. Let's know when you are coming. I actually meant to contact you. I'll let you. Know later on when you're coming so that we okay, can sir. mobilize our people and you know we're really looking forward to that god bless you yes, sir. thank you i sir. love to everybody my pleasure sir all right then take god care bless you too sir great time tomorrow miracle a- signs of a- wonders a- open heaven amen a- we'll be joining from amen a- a- thanks a lot god bless you bless you sir bye bye i send me right to sister pastor Bims. yes i will do she's watching pastor now Bims, she's, she's watching now so bless you pastor beams bless you bless you all right then bye hey how do i see the video oh, okay. okay all right god bless you okay on youtube so we we'll see you later Oh, okay. I forgot to say prayer meeting. Anyway, let me draw quickly. Yeah, yeah. Those who joined us.